I just got down here to the shop and I guess yesterday we were trying to figure out how these batteries go in the combine since there was three reds and only one black. This combine is a 24 volt, so you would have a red to the plus and the negative, and it's just, but Cooper's got it already done, started it, everything's running. Whew, some of that's scary, but I'd rather wire it up 12 volt the first time, 12 volt the first time, then going backwards and frying a bunch of stuff, so it all worked out. Combine should be ready to roll. Looks like Zach's bringing in the tractor here. I think he's gonna work on service in this one. I'm not sure if Cooper's going to be doing, if he has much more hay to make this fall yet, or if he's going to be making some big round bales of corn stalks for some guys. I honestly don't know on that. But I want to get this tractor here serviced, power washed up. It's pretty well serviced, ready to roll, but we want to get it cleaned up, get the cab cleaned out. Then we need to put it on the little auger wagon. Seems like if you can keep things clean, they stay cleaner, easier to wash than letting everything get packed on there. Tractor there is a 1981 year, so pretty good looking tractor yet. Looks like we might start getting some rain. The little John Deere tractor here, we had about 160 hours on the engine oil. Time we put it on the cart, do a bunch of running around. We figured let's just go ahead and change oil now and know it's in good shape. Normally we try to change oil in that probably 160 to 200 hours. We're at 160 hours on the engine running it. So I figure it's just a good time to change it before we get out in the field. Maintenance kind of what keeps these things running. Whoa, it's all like it's raining now guys. We're getting rain, we are getting rain, we are getting rain. Getting water in the rain and the power wash. Might have been a quick rain. Let's hope it keeps coming down, but it sounds like it's softening up already. This summer, our emblem fell off the tractor, so we got to get it put back on. Put some liquid steel and... Should have been thinking that a little bit. Oops. Kind of noisy here in the shop. Looks like they're working on the bean head. Oh, why is it I'm so hungry today? I am hungry, hungry. Every time I look at something, like I look at the combine, it makes me think of an apple because it's red. I'm able to present myself for breaking down and eating garbage. I'm working on our one older grain cart, just trying to get things until the get hooked up to the big one. Slop around in here really bad. Well, I went to town and they supposedly got a spacer for in here, so we're going to try to put it in. Ugh. Now I just need to find the right hitch pin, but at least this is going to be a lot better than slopping all over. Slopping all over. Oh, one of them days, one of them days, still checking air pressure on tires. I walked by our 7140 case. I thought the tire looked a little squishy, so I checked the air pressure. Needs probably four pounds. But I was reading your comments this morning. Oh, uh, this morning. We had an air compressor, a little portable air compressor on one of the last videos. And read the comments. And I like how you guys think. And I love it that you put comments because them comments make me think about things too. One of the comments was about putting air in tires and if it blows up or something, some of you have known people that's gotten hurt, messed up the jaws, whatever. It's, uh, I do think about that every time I put air in tires. It is scary because there is a lot of air. This one's got 18 pounds, which may not sound like a lot, but it's a big tire. Could do a lot of damage, so. Them things that happen with a new tire, old tire. But I read the comments about the air compressor, make, draining them daily, draining them monthly and stuff. Yes, that's true. We do it a lot here in shop on our big air compressor, that little portable air compressor on wheels. 
kind of forgot about it. We just use it now and then. But I tell you guys, I do re read the comments and it's just nice when you guys make comments on different things that makes me think. And I've learned a lot from you guys too. You know, sometimes we do things daily and we just take it for granted. Hey, this is the way we do it. And then sometimes I read things and like, oh, I never, never even thought about doing it that way. So I appreciate that guys. Well, let's see what else we can tear up around here today, guys. We're over checking out Ben's over here at Cooper's. No, we're over here at Cole's place, checking out Ben's, getting ready. So when beans are ready, so I wanted to check in our 30,000 bushel bin, which is full of cobwebs. Ooh, man, hey, there's our leaf blower we've been looking for. Sometimes you just gotta look around and there's things you forgot where you put them. Come on in guys, let's check it out. Ooh, it's hot in here. Oh, it is hot. I don't know. Probably should sweep it, I'm guessing. Not real bad, but. Come on, Ellie. It's about 92 degrees today and it feels like 145 in the bin. Just kind of nice to sweep up the floor, get it cleaned up. Before we start putting new, new beans in here. I am so excited. You remember how Cole and Neva moved in with us and their two little terror kids. Well, anyhow, Cole and Neva. Cole is my son, Neva is my daughter-in-law. They kind of took over our garage. I mean, they took it over big time. Stuff was coming in by the box loads and we hardly had any room to park our vehicles anymore. It was just, well, we still kind of got a mess over here and I'm not gonna show that too much, but we do have a mess over here yet to clean, but half of our shed is back. Then they bring in a squat rack, squat, squat, Squatchish rack. I don't know what you call it. I'm gonna call it my pull-up bar because I can do pull-ups here. So this is gonna be really nice. When I come out in the morning, afternoon, when I come home at night, ch -ch -ch -ch, I can do some pull-ups out here. And then I see the dog comes over here and got into the garbage, the little munchkin. Probably should throw that in the garbage so it don't stink, put it in the dumpster. And then we got Cole over there. He's the one that kind of cleaned things up. What a better sight of yeah, it's nice, doesn't it? It does. The only thing I might do sometime, maybe pull that a little bit this way in case the Drango comes up close to the wall to give mom more room to get in and out. That's fine. Take a look at this, guys. This is Elmer. We just got done waxing him and he's the semi. I was had to like get the wax on, get it off quick. But I tell you what, that is a sharp looking truck for an older, older rig. And then these are the fender flares that Cooper and Zach put on. <whistles> looking nice, looking nice. I'll have to pull out the papers later. I do not remember what year this rig is. This will be the third season I think we've ran it. Is that right? I think so. I think this will be the third season. We bought this from a family in the uh, southern part of Iowa. When me and Cooper went and looked at it, it just made you feel good. It was a vehicle, a rig that the family told you exactly what they knew about it. They had the paperwork on it for when they changed the oils and stuff. And it was just a good, clean truck. And I do remember, and this is something, like I said, honesty is the best. When we took it home, we were going to send the plates back right away so they could get a little refund from the uh, the county for the plates. Anyhow, got it home. Remember how it was now? Oh, shoot. But anyhow, somehow forgot for a couple weeks and to make it right with the family, I sent them an extra hundred bucks because it was my delay that held them up and I didn't want to short them on the money. So, you know, things like that. Sometimes the guy just got to stop and say, hey, it was my fault. Don't try to make excuses or anything. And I talked to the family to make sure that more than made it right. So sent them the money and everything they needed and got her taken care of. 